So number seven then, another integration in the 2009 Advanced Tire paper, another substitution. This time it's telling you the substitution, but you could have guessed that for yourself, x equals two sine theta. Because normally with a substitution, you'd look to the nasty bit and think of replacing that by a variable. However, you would notice that the other part isn't related to it in that it's related to its derivative. So you'd have to use that other feature, which is whenever you've got the square root of something minus x squared, you could think of trigonometrical ones because one minus sine squared makes cos squared. So that'd be handy if that was a sine squared. Then it'd become a cos squared and the squared would just be a cos. But it wouldn't just be sine squared. I'd have to do this. I'd have to let x equals, because four minus sine squared would be no use. I'd want four minus four sine squared. So x would be two sine theta, which is just what it said that you had to use in the first place. Right, so you just start integrating and uh, differentiating this. So what have I got then? dx by d theta is just going to be two cos theta. So the dx can be replaced by two cos theta d theta. Right, there's the differentials taken care of. Now what about the limits? If x equals zero, that means two sine theta is going to equal zero. Oh, well, theta will just be zero. And if x is root two, that means that 2 sine theta will be root 2. So sine theta will be root 2 upon 2, which is the same as 1 over root 2. That's the 45 degrees. That's the pi upon 4. So there we go. We're all ready for the substitution now. That's it all sorted. Let's just put all of these ingredients into the bowl and see what kind of cake we can make out of it. We've got 0 and we've got pi upon 4 x squared has got a direct replacement, so that'll be 4 sine squared. Not too worried about that just now. x was this, over the square root of 4 <coughs> minus, now x is the same thing as the top then, minus 4 sine squared theta, times dx, which is 2 cos theta d theta. A little bit of tidying up here. Now the 4 can come out, I don't really want to use line after line, maybe I'll put a note down here somewhere. Oh, such indecision. 4 minus 4 sine squared theta, you can take the 4 out, leaving 1 minus sine squared theta, which then becomes 4 cos squared theta. And if it's a square root, then the square root of that will be 2 cos theta. So what I've got is this then. I've got 4 sine squared theta times 2 cos theta d theta, and the bottom part, being the square root of that, which is 2 cos theta. And the justification's over there. Those parts will cancel out. So I'm left with 4 times the integral from pi upon 4, 0 to pi upon 4, of sine squared theta d theta, which on the surface looks easy enough, except it's not one of the standard integrals. The only simple trigonometrical integrals are the ones where you've got a trig function of a linear expression, not the square of a trig function. But, as it reminded you, you had these other expressions. You've got that form of cos of the double angle can be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I could rearrange that in terms of cos 2 theta. If I take that over, I've got 2 sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos 2 theta. But, instead of finishing off and saying sine squared theta is a half of that, since I've got four of them, it means I can have two of these. Mm. So what I've got then is two lots of, from zero to pi up in four, of one minus cos two theta, d theta. If you didn't like that, you could just change that all the way through and make it a half, and then put that in and take the half out, and that would have multiplied that. Ready to go now. So, one, we'll go back up to theta, negative cos, will come from negative sine, so it'll be minus sine 2 theta, but divide by the derivative of the inner function, so divided makes it a half sine 2 theta, evaluated at 0 to pi up in 4. Almost there, just as well, because I'm hitting the bottom. So I've got two times, what have I got all together? Evaluated at pi up in 4. So I've got pi up in 4 minus a half sine, and 2 times pi upon 4 is pi upon 2, I better just put this in a wee bracket, minus, now value to the 0, so I'll just be 0, minus a half of 
sine 0. Well, that whole part's going to go. So all I'm left with is this first part here then. And I know that sine pi upon 2, that's at the top at 90 at pi upon 2, just comes to 1. So I'll put a wee note here, that comes to 1. So my final answer, I know it's not very neat, I don't have enough room left, will be 2 times pi upon 4 minus a half. Or if you want to double that up, I've got pi upon 2 minus 1 for my final answer.